Hello, this is Robin Norgren, the host of Creativity Montessori and the Meaning of Life. This is a poem by Mary Oliver called Six, Six Recognitions of the Lord. I know a lot of fancy words. I tear them from my heart and my tongue. Then I pray. Lord God, mercy is in your hands. Pour me a little. And tenderness, too. My need is great. Beauty walks so freely and with such gentleness. Impatience puts a halter on my face and I run away over the green fields wanting your voice, your tenderness, but having to do with only the sweet grasses of the fields against my body. When I first found you, I was filled with light. Now the darkness grows and it is filled with crooked things, bitter and weak each one bearing my name. I lounge on the grass, that's all, so simple. Then I lie back until I am inside the cloud that is just above me, but very high and shaped like a fish, or perhaps not. Then I enter the place of not thinking, not remembering, not wanting. When the blue jay cries out, his riddle in his carping voice, I return. But I go back. The threshold is always near. Over and back, over and back. Then I rise. Maybe I rub my face as though I have been asleep. But I have not been asleep. I have been, as I say, inside the cloud or perhaps the lily floating on the water. Then I go back to town to my own house, my own life, which has now become brighter and simpler, somewhere I've never been before. Of course, I have always known you are present in the clouds, and the black oak I especially adore, and the wings of birds, but you are present too in the body, listening to the body, teaching it to live instead of all that touching with disembodied joy. We do not do this easily. We have lived so long in the heaven of touch and we maintain our mutability, our physicality, even as we begin to comprehend the other world. Slowly we make our appreciative response. Slowly appreciation swells to astonishment and we enter the dialogue of our lives that is beyond all understanding or conclusion. It is a mystery. It is a love of God. It is obedience. O oh, feed me this day, Holy Spirit, with the fragrance of the fields and the freshness of the oceans which you have made. And help me to hear and to hold in all dearness those exacting and wonderful words of our Lord Christ Jesus saying, Follow me. Every summer, the lilies rise and open their white hands until they almost cover the black waters of the pond. And I give thanks, but it does not seem like adequate thanks. It doesn't seem festive enough or constant enough, nor does the name of the Lord or the words of thanksgiving come into it often enough. Everywhere I go, I am treated like royalty, which I am not. I thirst, and I am, giving, am given water. My eyes thirst, and I am given white lilies of the black water. My heart sings, but the apparatus of singing doesn't convey half of what it feels and means. In spring, there's hope. In fall, the exquis exquisite necessary diminishing. In winter, I am as sleepy as any beast in its leafy cave. But in summer, there is everywhere the illuminous sprawl of gifts. The hospitality of the Lord and my inadequate answers as I row 
my beautiful temporary body through the water lily world. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 from the New Living Translation says, Don't be obsessed with getting more material things. Be relaxed with what you have. Since God assured us, I'll never let you down, never walk off and leave you. We boldly quote, God is there, ready to help. I'm fearless no matter what. Who or what can get to me? How many trusted people have let you down? How many have been unsupportive or simply not present at all? You might have learned to always keep your guard up for sheer survival. In this constantly changing, incredibly fast culture, it is easy to live expecting financial, relational, and emotional blows. But Jesus promises that no other human being what no other human being can, that he will never leave you and that he will never change. His love is constant and his support is unfailing. The abandonment that you feel so deeply is the opposite of his character. Not only is Christ not going to walk away, he will always be walking after you. Even if you try to leave, he will find you. Yesterday, today, tomorrow. Whether you're in church or in good spirits or in a corner of broken doubt on your knees. Praise and thank Christ for his unchanging and constant love. Confess the abandonment you fear most. What are you afraid will change and leave you alone? Ask for help forgiving those who have left you feeling unable to trust. Ask God to speak into that fear with a sense of his absolute trustworthiness. Although the world is changing quickly, Paul suggests we try, we should strive to imitate some of Christ's constancy. From a sense of God's unchanging love, how will you practice constancy today in your life and in your love of others? So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. This is an excerpt from the book Crushing, God Turns Pressure into Power by T.D. Jakes. What if the dark places in your life are essential to the cultivation of your full potential? What is a seed if it's not planted? Think of the beauty, purpose, destiny, and provision that is kept from the world when we lock a seed away in order to, that it remain dormant. To keep a seed from being planted is to condemn that seed to never realize its full potential. It is a fact that seeds are meant to be covered and die. No matter who we are, where we are in life, or where we've come from, we must begin to appreciate the ugly stages of our inception. When we allow the Lord to shift our mindset, we begin to appreciate Jesus' words even more. John twelve twenty four. Very truly I tell you, Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Everything that has ever happened to you happened for a reason. If we look back at the sprout that pushed itself through the ceiling of dirt above it, we arrive at the conclusion 
that we will understand the reasons behind our adversity when we arrive at the fruit-bearing stage. For when does a pot know exactly what its purpose is? Is it not when the potter is done forming and molding it? Those areas and times in which the death of a dream, an assignment, or vision seems to stalk your every move are nothing more than entrances into the next realm of your life. Do not run from them. Embrace them. Because the proverbial death of what you are trying to keep alive will enrich the growth and lives of others. They form the soil and mulch that generate meaning from your mistakes. Without nutrients in the ground of its formation, the seed cannot be planted. From one seed comes a vine, from the vine comes the fruit. From the fruit comes even more seeds that give rise to even more plants. Just as Jesus was buried and from him continue to come millions of new spiritual plants that bear marvelous grapes for making eternal wine, there are thousands of seeds that will come from you being planted. Transformation requires sacrifice. And I wonder if you have mislabeled the husbandman's planting of you as him condemning you to a graveyard. Far be it from the Eternal One to be so finite and temporary. I encourage you to allow God's prison of purpose in your life to do what it was intended to do, develop you into a strong vine. It's your location of cultivation When God escorts you out of the season of pain, be sure to leave behind the sorrow, bitterness, and anger. After all, what good would it be for the vine dresser to take you through the entire process only for you to give rise to mediocre fruit or sour wine? Wherever you are, whatever your dirty places might be, look around you and allow the master to adjust your thinking. After all, God is not done with you yet. You are a seed designed to sprout. Your fruit is becoming his wine. Thanks so much for stopping by. You can find me on uh, Instagram under at Robin underscore Norgren, N-O-R-G-R-E-N, or under at U-B-U for life, all words spelled out.